Ladies and gentlemen, a new contender has emerged. And no, it's certainly not that super team in Milwaukee and their Hall of Fame coaching staff. It's a team down in Ohio. And yeah, Cleveland, this is for you. Cleveland, this is for you. And if you haven't heard about their coach, you better take note because Kenny Atkinson is an underappreciated genius. With yet another win against the Bucks, the Cavs have matched the best start in franchise history, equaling the 1976-1977 Cavs. And it's not just luck. For the Cavs, they saw this coming. And that's why we need to talk about what the Cleveland Cavaliers are doing right now. The Eastern Conference is stacked. You've got the defending champs keeping their core, the big three in Philadelphia, the offensive juggernaut in Indiana, and the reinforced New York Knicks. But there's a certain team that's leading the charge that no one saw coming, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the most complete team in the NBA today. No superstars, no Hall of Fame coaches, and just a handful of national televised games, and yet they are playing the best basketball today. Last season, the Cavs were decent. They finished fourth and even stole one at the Garden in the East second round. But let's be real, no one saw the Cavs as a contender. Everybody knew the Celtics would run them down. Even the Cavs fans knew it wasn't enough because they haven't solved one of their fatal flaws last season, chemistry. If you watched some games of Cleveland last season, their offense seemed disconnected and you can see it in their body language. This young Cavs squad lacked composure. It does not help that your number one guy in Donovan Mitchell was giving skeptical answers to the media about his future in this team. Cavs' front court was also a problem. With Mobley and Jared Allen sharing almost the same play style, they tend to clog the paint and limit the options for Darius Garland and Mitchell. And well, there's one man who's responsible for fixing this, and that's their head coach. The Cavs' front office decided to pull the plug on J.B. Bickerstaff for one reason. He wasn't being that locker room leader Cleveland desperately needs which led us to one of the most underrated signings this offseason, new head coach Kenny Atkinson. Remember that fun 2018-2019 Brooklyn Nets team led by D'Angelo Russell and the GOAT Jared Dudley? Yeah, Kenny Atkinson was also the coach of that squad. That team has no business even touching the NBA playoffs. They were once considered the worst team in the NBA. But hey, they put up a fight against the process Philadelphia 76ers. Dudley versus Ben Simmons in that series was cinema. Remember the vibes around that Nets team? Immaculate. They're just having fun out there, and that's because of their head coach, Kenny Atkinson. The Cavs were somewhat similar to that Nets team. Young, fiery, hungry, and in dire need for a leader. And that's Kenny Atkinson. And he made it clear that's the first thing he needed to do. That's one thing I'm really gonna hold myself accountable to as a season goes, keeping those relationships strong keeping it going. And when you're clear on fixing the team's chemistry, it's clear where you would start, on your stars. How would Kenny Atkinson sway the narrative that your number one star might leave this offseason? One thing, winning. Last season, under J.B. Bickerstaff, the Cavs ended with 47 wins. Pretty low for a team with the sixth best defense in the league. Their defense was their bread and butter. Not surprising with a team with two defensive big men. Good luck penetrating to the rim against the Cavs. Either you hit the floor or get swatted. But here's the problem, their offense. Oh man, their offense was just stagnant. Two defensive big men in the paint mean zero spacing for their guards to operate. Let's be honest, Mitchell played with Rudy Gobert, the biggest paint clogger in history, so he's not new to this kind of offense. But this time in Cleveland, he has two. You know what? Pair Mitchell with a shooting big, he would average 40. Spider's no joke. This season, however, the narrative's changed. The Cavs, who had an atrocious stagnant offense last season, jumped from 18th to the second best offense in the league. That's right, second. Their defense, pretty much the same, in seventh. How did Kenny Atkinson achieve this? Well, it's simple, pace. This Cleveland team is full of young, feisty athletes. Use that to outrun your opponents and get transition buckets. We're struggling with our half-court sets? Then use our defense to create a rapid-fire offense too fast for the opponents to keep up. And what does the transition offense offer? Open shots. Atkinson gave his team the green light to shoot transition threes with no hesitation. Miss? You'll hit the next one. The confidence Atkinson gives his players is just insane. Karis LeVert, who he coached back then in Brooklyn, is shooting a mind-boggling 52.4% beyond the arc. Yeah. 
over 50%. Three starters from the Cavs are also shooting over 40%. DG and Spida, and you ready for the next one? Evan Mobley. Yeah, you cannot call him a paint clogger anymore because he's lethal from the range this season. 41.7% beyond the arc. Talking about putting extra hours in the gym this season. With Mobley hitting his shots, the floor just got a little wider for their two all-star guards to operate. But one question remains. Can these two alphas coexist? It's time to talk about the elephant in the room, Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell. When Mitchell got traded to the Cavs, DG instantly knew that his role for the franchise would greatly lessen. He knew he was going to be regulated into a spot-up shooter role. Well, for every aspiring young star in the league, that's not enough. DG likes to create his own shots, occasionally finish on the rim, and pull up from mid-range. But that's what Mitchell also does. So, two similar guards sharing the rock for the same team. See how Harden and Westbrook turned out? Yeah. The Cavs made sure that Mitchell would be their number one guy, but things shifted quickly. When Mitchell got down with an injury, DG elevated his game into all-star numbers. He quickly pounced on the opportunity and made a statement that Cleveland could be his own team. And it caused a bad atmosphere inside the Cavs' locker room. At least, that's what the media wants us to believe. With Mitchell's tendency to extremely dominate the ball, the media was expecting DG to lash out about his role. Even this summer, the media was so sure that if Cavs kept Mitchell, DG would walk. But that didn't happen as DG signed a new deal with the Cavs. The franchise decided to ride with the duo for one more season despite all the doubts. They gambled. And so far, they're winning big time. This season, Atkinson presented a more balanced offense for the Cavs, giving Mitchell the lowest minutes of his career with only 29.6. But less has yielded more for Mitchell. Last season, the Cavs just did whatever Mitchell pleases to do, unlimited pick and rolls until he gets a clean look. But that's not the case this season. Mitchell has been picking his spots. He and Garland are sharing the rock graciously. DG is nice, no doubt. And one weapon he polished in his arsenal was his floater game. DG is averaging a ridiculous 62.5% from short mid-range so far, almost automatic. The Cavs' backcourt is getting scarier and scarier, and they're not even in midseason form yet. And you know the main reason these two coexisted? Because their big men are doing their part. Nah, scratch that. More like dominating their part. We talked about how Evan Mobley has improved drastically this season, but it's time to give Jared Allen his props. This man has been a defensive juggernaut for the Cavs, with incredible efficiency on the offensive end, shooting over 76%. Yeah, 76. These two have been flourishing under the guidance of Kenny Atkinson, and well, they are just getting started. With these four playing the best basketball of their lives, the league stood absolutely no chance. These four alone combined to 76 points per game. 76? Kenny Atkinson instilled that basketball is a team sport. Everybody could shine. He also introduced a 10 to 11 man rotation that gives valuable minutes to guys like Isaac Oroko and even Sam Merrill. Don't know that guy? Better look him up because if there's an award for eighth man of the year, this man would win unanimously. Just take a look at the Cavs game against the Bucks. Milwaukee's having a phenomenal game. Giannis was unstoppable, and Dame was shooting the lights out of the building. They were hitting everything. The Cavs tried to match the Bucks' firepower, chucking in three-pointers of their own, sacrificing good looks. Well, that certainly backfired for them. They were down as much as 16 in the first quarter alone. But the composure of this young Cleveland Cavalier team was just unmatched especially from their coach, Kenny Atkinson, who made a swift adjustment. Doc Rivers might need to take some notes. Atkinson urged his team to focus on themselves and remember their game plan, defense and discipline. Suddenly, this Cavs team responded and became patient, creating more quality looks and chipped in the lead using their paint dominance. We could have just kind of wilted. Instead, we were resilient. We stuck with it, made a little run and got back in, said Atkinson. Garland, Mobley, Allen, and even Sam Merrill played a huge part in cutting Milwaukee's lead. Merrill's even executing pick and rolls better than some of the starting guards in this league. Bucks vs. Cavs became an instant classic. In the second half alone, there were 17 lead changes, with Lillard hitting a clutch jump shot to give the Bucks the edge with 9.1 seconds left. But 
with the game on the line, big shot takers became big shot makers. That's why you pay hundreds of millions of dollars to your star. Mitchell turned an almost lost possession into a game-winning midi. Butter sent the Bucks home hacking. Next game when they faced the Bucks again, it was Garland's turn to make the big time shot. Same result, same Doc Rivers with his hands on his knees as the Cavs became the only undefeated team in the East. With how the Cavs are playing, they could easily get that 10-0 after a win against the Pelicans and the Warriors. But only one question remains. Can they keep this up? Let's be real. Boston is a lock to have a deep playoff run. We might as well book them one ticket to the Eastern Conference Finals. But do the Cavs have what it takes to bring the fight to Boston? Well, it depends whether Garland and Mitchell could play this well together come playoff time. The Cavs have a deep bench. If the likes of Oroko, Merrill, and Lavert continue to step up, there's no point in trying. The two Eastern Conference finalists are locked in. Now Cavs fans, it's time to share your thoughts. How deep do you think the Cavs can make it this postseason? Are they ready to face the defending champs? And well, at this point, making a statement by starting 12-0, which was done by only seven other teams in history. Did you know that five out of these seven teams went to the NBA Finals? Yeah, that includes the 96-97 Bulls and the 93-94 Rockets. It's safe to say the odds really are in Cleveland's favor.